Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, referring to the day of Christ when he returns, that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This means those who claim to be believers. We're talking about people who are supposedly, quote, of the church, of the congregation, saints in the making, those who claim Christ Jesus. When the B system is in full swing, of which, of course, you can read in the entire book of Revelation, and we are prepared for it over and over again. So if you eat your daily bread of the scriptures, you will be prepared. But unfortunately, many, many so-called believers are not prepared, and they will fall under this group of the falling away. We actually read in the book of Acts so many accounts that are going to be exactly how it's going to be for believers in the end times. Or in other words, now, in that the way in which they were persecuted for believing in Jesus is exactly what you are to expect as a believer now. This is the kind of sacrifice and the kind of persecution Jesus kept telling us we're supposed to await. That's why he said those who don't deny their mother or their father, those who don't deny their entire lives is not fit to be my disciple. Those are strong words. Those aren't just like half, you know, joking words or something. So as an example, in Acts, um, when the, when the apostles were going about and preaching, you know, the kingdom of God and repentance and forgiveness of sin through Christ Jesus, they were being attacked. And it says here, those who were attacking them, did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name, talking about teaching in Jesus' name? And behold, you filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us, etc. Then Peter, listen to what he says. I want you to understand just how this is in reality of life. Could you not imagine like a mob of people around you? Again, 2020 in hindsight, there are many of us who experienced this. Those of us who denied and said no to what all the world were forcing us to do. We know what this is like. But if you went along with that whole thing and you still don't understand what was wrong with it, then your eyes are still completely, your eyes are completely veiled and asleep. You need to pray and ask God uh, for insight and wisdom and repent and ask him for forgiveness for your ignorance at the time so Peter and the other apostles answered in this like mob crowd of people that are ready to kill them we ought to obey God rather than men okay the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you slew and you hung on a tree again I want you to understand this in reality your life can be on the line your job can be on on the line your livelihood can be on the line your family can be on the line and yet you still don't deny Jesus in front of people other people that's the point so him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a saviour for to forget, give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of our sins. And we are what his witnesses. That's why the apostles are also so important and there are various witnesses in the Bible. And by the way, when you are born again, your testimony is a witness because God reveals himself to you through Jesus Christ to those that he wants to reveal himself. I have a witness of Jesus Christ. I know he's real. We are witness of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him. God gives us the Holy Spirit when we obey him and his word. One of which was Stephen, and Stephen was full of faith and power. Those are two things, two very important things, that when you have that from God, you're practically invincible. Full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people. Now I want you to understand something here. Does that mean that therefore his life was amazing in all ways and that he lived a long time no Stephen was martyred okay so great faith and power does not mean that you I don't know become rich and famous or whatever people think that means that's what Satan promises you God can for sure bless you in various worldly things but it all depends on what your calling is and what he brings you to your level of faith what he then therefore appoints to you as a purpose here but as Stephen is preaching to these people and telling them like explaining how Moses saved them uh, out of the wilderness, like how God was with them the whole time, how they denied uh, all of that and said, you know, oh, this Moses, what's, you know, they kept turning back to Egypt and saying unto Aaron, make us gods to go before us. As for this Moses, you know, as for this leader you appointed to us who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what became of him. And again, like the behavior, the behavior of the way that people fall away, because the moment that, you know, you got a bit of discomfort, you're denying God. It's exactly the way people are today. 
It's exactly the way people are today. It's the what's in it for me mentality. But Jesus repeatedly said, that's not who his children are. The fruits of the spirit are not the selfish what's in it for me mentality. It's a mentality of service. We're servants of Christ. So God gave them up to worship the hosts of heaven. As in he said, go ahead. You want to worship the work of your own hands. You want to worship the heavenly bodies, the heavenly beings. You know, go for it. It is written in the book of the prophets. O you house of Israel, you have offered me to... You'd, you have offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness. It's like, did they even once offer up a sacrifice of thanksgiving in the 40 years of the wilderness? Apparently not at all. You took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, figures which you made to worship them. Again, your own work of your own hands, you're worshipping your own hands. Vanity this is, and I will carry you beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, which was the... Um, tabernacle they made to go in to worship the true living god yeah as he had appointed speaking unto moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen so he's reminding them basically of the ancestors talking uh, to the jews at this specific point reminding them literally you guys have fallen away time and time again and you're repeating the same thing and then it goes to say you know god says heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool what house will you build me says the lord or what place or what is the place of my rest have not my hands made all things? Yes. And you also remember God asks rhetorical questions. Of course, he knows the answer. He's waiting to see what you will say. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in the heart and ears, as I told you before. Following the law for God is absolutely, of course, vital. But you have to want to do it from your heart. And because you want to actually be a righteous and godly person, not because you want to look good in front of others. That's the key difference. You do always resist, resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets have you not persecuted? He's like, literally, which of the prophets have you not literally denied, killed, persecuted? And that continues. Again, today, people are exactly the same. They have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have now been the betrayers and murderers, talking about Jesus, of course, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and yet you have not kept it. Again, see, they never even kept the law properly. Again, hence the need for the Saviour, Jesus Christ, and hence through him we're then able to keep the law. Not we do whatever we want. We become holy as he is holy. But when they heard these things, listen, they were cut to the heart. As in this is, they, they became angry and in denial and they were offended. Offended by what? The truth. All of this, what he said is the truth. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. That's where his position is, by the way. And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Amen. Then they cried out. So now they're even angrier at him. OK, they cried out with a loud voice and they look at this. They stopped their ears. Literally, they put their hands over the ears. They're like, we don't want to hear what you're saying. And they literally, with a mob-like, crazy mentality, ran upon him with one accord and basically stoned him to death. Okay? And by the way, at this point, Saul, who became Paul, was to become witness of all this thing, who calls himself chief of sinners, becomes one of like the key apostles, gave his life completely to Christ. Like, total huge transformation. Again, if your life hasn't changed after you're born again, then you haven't been born again. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. So that Stephen was calling upon God as they're killing him. Again, understand the martyrdom here. And saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. But then listen to this. He kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Which means died in human form. Uh, the incredible thing about that is not what people always like to twist it and say, you know, therefore, you know, you should just uh, stop judging people's sin, etc. No, 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 no. This is showing his righteousness. His level of righteousness was, Lord, I'm not going to try and avenge myself. I'm not going to try and um, uh, attack them. I'm not going to try and basically uh, cause them harm and return evil for evil instead i pray lord that you don't lay the sin to their charge that is a level of righteousness that is so high and that's why of course i mean stephen was obviously uh, an amazing saint and became martyred 
which is a literal honor. It literally says that God, uh, it's precious in his eyes, the death of his son.